Okay, this is a problem about the active site of uh, chymotrypsin, and I already started writing this out. I mean, again, I apologize for the handwriting. Um, I'm going to read it to you guys so that you can read what the hell I wrote here. And it was a bit long-winded. Ba basically, what it comes down to is describing a organic chemistry mechanism reaction in words, because that's essentially what it, what this question's asking us to do. So. I don't know if this is really all that relevant for your class. I mean, it may or may not be, but I guess it's worth just kind of looking at and, and discussing here. So it says, describe the roles of aspartate, serine, and histidine at the active site of chymotrypsin. Okay, so let's start with the aspartate here. So aspartate aids in the process by, pol by the polarizing effects of the unsolivated carboxylate ion, which is hydrogen bonded to histidine 57. So what it does is it helps change the polarity of the bond to histidine 57, okay? It helps make it a little bit easier for this reaction to proceed. And then if you talk about the histidine here, so there's a, so serine is linked to the histidine, okay? And the aspartate. When a peptide substrate binds, okay, a sublittle change in conformation compresses the hydrogen bond which allows histidine 57 to act as an, as an enhanced base that removes a proton from serine 195. Okay, so what, what, what are we talking about here? So these are all linked, okay? The histidine, the aspartate, the serine, they're all linked. And when a peptide substrate, so some substrate binds to the active site, right? a sublittle change in conformation. Now we saw that a lot in previous videos. I talked about sublittle changes in conformation from binding allosterics or from binding oxygen to hemoglobin, okay? Any of those things, that's what we're talking about. There's a little change that occurs. And what that change does is it compresses the hydrogen bond, okay? Which allows histidine 57 to act as an enhanced base and remove a proton from serine 195. So let's just think about histidine. First of all, histidine, real quick, just as we're doing this, okay, P, the, the physiological pH, so the pH that this is occurring at is 7.4. So histidine loses its proton at about 6, so the pH is 6. So it's probably going to be deprotonated here. And, that, and that's exactly what we would expect, because remember, the Bronsted-Lowry definition of, of a base. A, a base takes a proton, okay? An acid donates a proton, a base takes a proton. That's essentially what we're talking about here. So the histidine has to act as an enhanced base. And what aids in its ability to act as a base is this, is this um, conformational change that compresses the hydrogen bond, okay? And then you might be asking, well, what does the serine do? The serine 195 acts as a nucleophile and attacks a bond and cl to cleave it, essentially. So what the ultimate goal of this whole thing is, is to remove a proton from serine, and that puts a negative charge. We might remember serine here. Okay, I'm just going to write SER, and I'm going to say OH. Okay, right, so if we remove a proton from there, we have serine O with a negative charge here, okay, right? There's a negative charge on there, it's kind of big, but that's supposed to be a negative charge. Okay, and that negative charge on oxygen, I mean, this is like deprotonating an alcohol. This can, this can be a pretty strong nucleophile. I mean, if you recall from organic chemistry, anything with a negative charge on an oxygen or a nitrogen is a fairly strong nucleophile. So what that does then is it does a nucleophilic attack, okay, and it, cle it cleaves whatever that substrate is it can, to, to form enzyme plus product. Remember we said it goes through an en enzyme substrate reaction, forms an enzyme substrate complex, then it cleaves this bond, we have enzyme, and we have product, okay? So that's essentially what's going on there. That's a lot of information, it's a lot of complicated mechanism type stuff that, again, I don't know how important it will be, I'm just doing this kind of for completeness. So if I can get my camera to focus here, there's actually another question um, about about this relating to this. And it says, predict and explain the effect of mutating histidine 57 to lysine on the, cat on the catalytic rate of chymotrypsin. Okay. Well, chymo chymotrypsin, okay, they're saying we're going to go from histidine 57, HIS 57, okay, 
and we want and we're going to change that to lysine okay now the one thing I wanted to say was remember it, 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 this is going to be neutral okay it's going to be polar but it's going to be neutral so it's not going to be charged okay so it's not charged but lysine on the other hand remember that's one of our basic amino acids and that's going to be charged all the way up until a, a fairly high um, a fairly high pH so like I think it's around 10.5 I believe off the top, if I'm getting that right off the top of my head that lysine doesn't lose a proton until around 10.5 okay um, pH equal to 10.5 so this is going to be protonated so obviously if we're substituting something here that's on it's a polar amino acid it's a polar amino acid but this is not charged and this is charged then that's going to definitely have some kind of effect on the catalytic rate and obviously it's probably going to have a pretty detrimental effect on the catalytic rate because um, we're changing something that's polar on charged in this case under these conditions to something that's polar charged and, and that's going to make a difference so if I were answering the question completely I might say something like histidine 57 is a polar charged residue I mean is a polar residue but lysine will have a positive charge at physiological pH which will be a problem since histidine 57 needs to act as a base so remember before going back to our mechanism discussion here histidine 57 is acting as a base so if it's protonated it's not going to want to act like a base it's going to have a positive charge it's going to want to act like an acid it's going to want to donate a proton so th that's obviously going to affect what goes on here so if that cannot act as an, as, you know, as a base or not properly act as a base, you know, any modification in that area, any remember, any modification to the active site of an enzyme, you know, can completely decrease the rate of, of um, the reaction. And at the worst, actually, I, I would say that in most cases, changes at the active site are the most sensitive changes. So if you have a change in amino acid at the active site, there's a good chance that this enzyme's no longer going to function at all. I mean, I can't say for certain off the top of my head here, based on what I'm talking, based on what I have, and what I know about chymotrypsin and um, and these amino acid residues. But I can kind of deduce, these, like you know, I can kind of work my way through the problem, think about it, you know, kind of intuitively think about what's going to happen here. But again, mutations, changes of the of the amino acids, or changes of the residues at the active site is, is certainly going to have a detrimental effect and in this case can have a negative effect definitely decreasing the rate okay now there's one more here and it said what would be the characteristic transition state analog for chymotrypsin reaction okay well they're asking about the transition state analog um, well this you kind of just have to know what <laughs> what kind of grooves bind um, to the chymotrypsin active site and, and one of the things you'll notice if you look this up I don't have a picture I probably should have got one is is that there's probably going to be an aromatic ring okay because it has a perfect position for something like phenylalanine so that would fit into the pocket so it would fit very nicely into this active site pocket and um, the analog would also need to have you know precisely a tetrahedral group okay they would want to have a tetrahedral group capable of forming a hydrogen bond because one thing you'll notice if you actually get a diagram of this <clears throat> which again I probably should have done is that you'll have a very you'll you'll be able to form one extra hydrogen bond if you have a tetrahedral intermediate as opposed to a trigonal planar one so it's beneficial obviously this is going to be this thing is going to be um, tetrahedral this uh, transition state analog and I don't know maybe it would have two alcohol groups on it possibly okay to, to, to make that tetrahedral to and they would be a high, remember OH OH bonds are capable of forming hydrogen bonds with an O or with another O um, so the tetrahedral transition state analog would look a lot like the transition state okay so I, I don't know how helpful this this video will be overall I just wanted to kind of briefly intuitively go over these questions because they're a bit difficult and um, may, maybe in my opinion just a lot more memorization than they are um, than they really are true problem solving okay